Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Ryan, and welcome to another episode of Screenshot Saturday for March 4th, 2017. I've got five new picks to show you today that I've pulled from the Twitterverse. Uh, and as you can see, we're working with a little bit of a new layout here today. You can see my Twitter over there. You can follow me at Broke Glasses if you so choose. I would like it if you did. I'm always sharing all kinds of fun stuff regarding indie games and uh, indie games that are currently in development. So pop on over there if you wish. But let's get right into it with our first game. First up today is Marshlight Software's The Edgelands. Now, The Edgelands is an atmospheric adventure set in the present day based on real and imagined folklore. Uh, starting off in a house in the forgotten rural backwoods beyond the city, you soon find yourself exploring an uncanny rustic twilight landscape in which familiar rural landmarks overlap with otherworldly occurrences, creating a dreamlike blurring of the ordinary and the supernatural. Now, after watching the game's trailer, I was reminded of similar thematic elements that were seen in the Silent Hill series of games, where the mix of industrial and rock soundscapes perfectly accented the horrific distortion of the titular town. The Edgelands, however, utilizes electronic pieces and some light synthwave, which creates an atmosphere that personally reminds me of Richard Kelly's science fiction film Donnie Darko. Have a look. Next up, we have Cyber Shadow, an NES-style ninja platformer with a retro look, developed with the two-button limitations of an NES controller in mind, but those limitations are not followed religiously. The game's description over on the independent gaming forums reads, Slash through the armies of mechanical fiends to free your clan and discover what's happened during your rather long hibernation. Gather the skills of your captured clansmen to become the legendary ninja resurrected from your ancient memory. The game mixes hints of Metroid, Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden, and Mega Man. Now I am loving the look of this one, as well as the idea of throwing an old world combatant in the ring with mechanized war machines. Now while there isn't a full trailer available, there is a slew of screen, uh, screenshots excuse me, and GIFs for you to browse, so be sure to go over and show your support. The Alpinist is a climbing game which puts you in control of the title character as she ascends a mountain in treacherous territory. According to the developers, the reason for this climb is rooted in her search for some semblance of peace after a terrible tragedy occurs in her life. Now what attracted me to the project was the absolutely gorgeous environments such as what you can see here, which are brought to life with extremely well produced illustrations and lighting effects. The goal, states the developer, is to add a poetic dimension to the story via environments designed to accent the emotional contemplation of the player character. Surprisingly, the game will be offered free of charge when it's complete, but you'll be able to make donations if you like. Here's a look at their most recent developer vlog, which goes into further detail regarding the Alpinist's gameplay and technical design. The Alpinist is a game of platform cinematic in two dimensions. You incarnate a grimpeuse chevronné, bravant l'ascension d'un sommet quelque part dans les rocheuses américaines, au cœur d'une région réputée inhospitalière. En proie aux tourments qui font suite à un événement tragique, vous entreprenez cette quête introspective à la recherche d'une forme d'ordre alpiniste, l'escalade étant au centre de l'expérience de jeu, le premier atout de notre protagoniste est sa paire de piolets. Ceci lui permet de franchir les remparts rocheux qui se dressent sur son chemin. Manié avec habileté, ils s'avéreront très utiles face à des passages complexes ou dans certaines situations encore plus extrêmes. L'endurance est également un facteur non négligeable pendant la montée. Grimper avec un rythme trop soutenu peut conduire à des conséquences dramatiques. Le piton est un équipement vital dans ce genre de cas de figure. Il permet de rester ancré à la paroi le temps de récupérer assez d'énergie pour poursuivre l'ascension. Devant la variété topographique de la montagne, certaines sinuosités du relief seront franchissables d'un saut. Mais d'autres nécessiteront de l'élan et dans des cas plus intenses, les piolets, voire un matériel d'un autre type, le grappin. Par ailleurs, notre alpiniste est équipé de fusées éclairantes qui lui permettront d'arpenter plus sereinement les grottes, mines et autres cavernes. 
La possibilité de les lancer permettra également d'étendre les perspectives d'exploration, à l'image de pierres que l'on pourra ramasser à tout moment et qui permettront de débloquer des passages par réaction en chaîne ou de se défendre face à certaines bêtes sauvages. En chemin, des objets abandonnés ou des lieux spéciaux pourront être trouvés. Ceux-ci viendront alimenter une base de données accessible depuis le menu du jeu qui fournira une documentation authentique sur la faune, la flore, l'histoire et les différentes cultures des rocheuses américaines. En The Alpinist, notre volonté artistique aspire à mettre l'accent sur la contemplation à travers des environnements aussi riches que vivants. Avec un rendu illustré, sublimé par des effets de parallaxe et de lumière, nous comptons apporter à cette aventure une dimension substantiellement poétique. Une attention particulière a été portée sur l'ambiance générale du jeu, autant par des cadrages dynamiques que par l'habillage sonore, en passant par l'animation de la flore et les apparitions de la foule. Le moteur de jeu Unity nous confère une marge de manœuvre intéressante pour peaufiner tous ces détails, que ce soit en termes de caméra, de lumière, de particules, de profondeur ou de mode. It's been a while since this game last appeared on the channel, but Tower 57 is nearing completion and it has changed a lot since myself and Dave Boyce last had a look at it. The game is described as a top-down twin-stick shooter featuring a dystopian diesel-punk world where megatowers are the only enclaves of civilization. A group of extraordinary individuals is set to infiltrate the reclusive Tower 57, and their skills, clip capacity, and the ability to cooperate will decide on their fate. The game will have local as well as online co-op, and I have to recommend it since even at the early stages many months ago, the game was a fairly enjoyable experience. Here's a trailer. Well, fella, do you know the story when a scientist, a diplomat, a spy, and a bunch of other extraordinary individuals walk into a bar? I mean, steampunk tower-like fortress. Let me tell you, it might be the strangest one you've heard yet. You know, when a story opens like that, it's gonna end with a bang. And capping off today is a game I'm extremely excited for, and is also a bit of a holdover from last week since I didn't find out about it until directly after last week's video was published. Now this one basically speaks well enough for itself. Enjoy, and I'll see you guys next week.
Santos.